All right, welcome to my Blender tutorial. I've decided to set up these Traveler Blender tutorials in a few chunks um, because it's just easier for you to watch it in little pieces. This first part is just going to be an overview of Blender. Nothing really important here except for setting the presets. If you go to File and you go to User Preferences and you go to Interface, you see different things here. There's nothing here that's really too important right now. Um, editing, global undo, number of steps 32. Crank that up as far as your computer will allow. Um, my computer's old, but it has a lot of memory, so 64 steps is great. Input, um, the one thing here that's important is the emulate three button mouse. If you have a Mac, I'm not sure how to use that because I don't have a Mac. But also this left and right select. A lot of people prefer it on left, so you might want to change that. Um, orbit style, you can play with that, trackball or turnable. Um, the rest of it, not really important. Um, if you don't like your, your um, keyboard shortcuts, you can change them here. Um, Add-ons, this is really important. Um, although not for beginner, but there's a lot of things you can do with Blender that aren't turned on at the start. You have to come in here and turn them on if any of these things are needed by you. Um, the next thing is themes. You can set all your colors for everything you could ever think of. File system. This is something you might want to set. Where your fonts are, where your textures are, plugins, scripts. Um, their temp folders, where things are saved. Um, sounds pretty obvious. Um, animation player. <laughs> Interesting. Never played with that. Um, and then system information. Again, the direction light comes from. Sometimes that's important if you're trying to work into a little corner of your ship and you can't get the light in there. Um, all the rest of this I think is pretty obvious. So that's that. I'm going to close it. And now I'm going to just save the preferences. Save user settings. One thing that you want to be aware of is when you do this, it actually saves this little cube here. If you're in the middle of a project and you've saved a bunch of things and you save user proof pre preferences, it will save your spaceship, which is kind of stupid, but that's how it currently works. They're talking about changing that. So this is our basic screen. Here is a light. I'm selecting that with, with a right click. This is your camera. This is the default shape. This thing here in the middle let me get rid of those little arrows. This thing here in the middle is your 3D cursor. It's positioned in 3D space and it's where things will go when you add them. Um, what else? There are, on the number pad keys, allows you to have different views. This is from the top. And it's important here to see from your top view, there's a line here from the light. That's because perspective is on. If you use the 5 key, it turns off perspective. And now there's no line because it's straight down. So that's an important distinction to make. Um, the next thing to see is the middle button of your mouse allows you to rotate around. Um, and if you've clicked on something, you can grab it. Oops, wrong thing there. Grab and move it around. It moves in the plane that you currently see. So if you're looking from the top down and you move it, you're going to move it. See this red line and this green line? Here you have a red and a green, so you can move it in the XY plane. If you're from another side, and here you, here you can see a Z and an X, then it'll move in that plane. That's important. Up here it tells you what perspective. Here's front perspective, right perspective. If you want to get the other perspectives, like left perspective, then you use the shift key, and that gives you the back side of the shape. Ah. Sorry, it's not the shift key. It's now the control key. They changed it. Um, the four, six, two, eight keys allow you to rotate around. I don't use those. I almost never use those. Um, what else do we have? Ah, yes. Zero key gives you the camera view. Um, this here is your the edge of where the picture will be can be very important. Um, then here we have object tools. 
And these are all the things you can do. And if I press N, Object Tools goes away with, with T and uh, N brings up the other side here, which are all the uh, functions that are available. Um, and, and this is, you can see your object mode. If I use tab, it'll shift into edit mode and it, it edits the selected item, which is our cube. And you'll see that these all changed. That's important to keep track of. Um, the other thing to be aware of is that where the mouser, where the mouser, where the mouse is, is what um, the key affects. So since I'm in this window, it's affecting this window. If I were to go over to this window and do tab, it's not going to do anything because there's no function associated there. But there are other windows here. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. Um, up here, we have default. This is the default layout. There's a layout preset for animation um, and other things, compositing. UV editing. UV is uh, an important concept. This cube here has six sides. Um, X, Y, Z are the dimensions. UV is just like X, Y, but it's the surface of this cube, and you can unwrap this and it'll appear over here, like taking skin off an onion or skinning a deer or something. And then that allows you to uh, save a bitmap of that skin and paint it. You can go and paint it in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever your choice is. Um, video editing is just a video editor. It's pretty nice, actually. Um, game logic is for for setting up games. Something we're not too worried about. Yeah. So anyway, back to default. Um, over here on top, we have an object-oriented layout of what's there. There's not much here right now. Um, one important thing is that this cube has materials and textures all associated with it. Um, it's called cube right now, and you can see it down here, it says one cube. That is something that you will want to change. Um, right now we're in this little camera. This is the, the scene information. If we go here, we get the units. Um, here, a little world. Gives you all the, the stuff about the sky and light from the sun and all that. But here it says cube. So we might want to change that to space, if I can type, spaceship. And now you can see it's called spaceship here, and up here it becomes spaceship. But underneath it's still cube. Um, I won't worry too much about this under here being cube. Um, but it's nice to name this because if you are if you make something called chair and then you want to load it um, by going over here to append or link, then you're going to want to link something called chair. If it's just called cube 56, you won't know what you're doing. So it is good to name things. Um, you can see a lot of other ways you can group things, and look, things you can look at in this view screen. Um, back to this. These are your constraints. That's mostly used for animation. Not too much you to worry about. Um, some things like child of can be useful if you, if you have uh, a control surface or a door or something, and it's a child of the spaceship. It's fairly advanced, don't need to worry about that now. Modifiers, there's a lot of them. Arrays allows you to make duplicates, and then duplicates, duplicates of duplicates, and allows you to make shapes like star flakes, star f snowflakes, on, I can't talk tonight. All of these won't worry about. Bevel can be very useful. It's, it's about joining shapes together to make composite shapes where one takes a chunk out of the other or adds it to the other. Build, I don't know, I've never used it, it's a new thing. Um, decimate uh, helps um, make meshes smaller, I believe. All the rest of these are pretty obvious. Mirror, we'll be using a lot. It allows a left right mirror, and spaceships are generally uh, symmetrical. So it's good. You can build one side and the other side's the same. You don't have to build both sides. Multi-resolution is just a way of getting uh, something to have more detail when there's not so many points. Um, screw is, is for making things that twirl. Solidifies allows you to take a, uh, an object and make it thicker, give it body. Subdivision surface is similar to multi-resolution. It gives you more points. It allows things to be smoother. UV projection 
Uh, I've never used that, but I think that they're doing that UV surface mapping in a new way. Um, the rest of these are ways, as it says at the top here, to deform the mesh wave and whatnot. Um, and then these are simulations, clothing, collisions, explosions, smoke, soft bodies kind of making things out of jello. Also again, not too important to spaceships. Then here's the next thing where we can set that name again. We can also call this spaceship. And now you'll see up here, I guess I gotta hit enter. Um, up here now we have spaceship and spaceship for both of these. I'm not really sure what to call these different, uh, the different names, but one's the actual thing and one's the object. Um, these things here aren't real important right now. We'll ignore them. Um, this is a very important section. This is where you set the color. Right now you can see our cube is gray. If we want to make the specular color, which is blue, then there we have that. And you can't see it because it's a reflected color. But you can see here on the circle that there's a blue highlight. If we want to change the body color, then we can change that here. Now we have a green cube with a blue highlight which blue highlights kind of silly. More often we'll want, like say, a warm yellow, I don't think it really yellow, but a yellow highlight to give a warm lighting effect. Um, wire gives you a wire frame. Volume is for things like smoke. Halo is for making things glow. It's useful if you're using particles and you want to have fireworks, for example. Or a uh, halo can also be really useful if you're making fire coming out of the back of your spaceship rocket engine. Um, let's see, Lambert and Cook Tour, these are just different ways of doing the math, not important to us. Hardness is how shiny the object is. We'll go back to a uh, surface, you can see this circle here has got a kind of plasticky look if you change the hardness, yeah, see how that changes that circle, if you make it really hard, the point will be smaller, makes it look more shiny basically. Um, shading, this allows it, a, uh, an object to emit light, like the surface of an LED or something like that. Um, amount, of, amount of global op yeah, this ambient is not so important, just leave it at one most of the time. Shadeless, some things you don't want to cast shadows, stuff like that. Translucency is to make your thing uh, translucent, obviously. Transparency, um, again making things transparent. Z transparency or ray trace. That's an important decision. Z is a cheating way. Um, it's faster, but it's not as accurate. Ray trace is obviously more accurate. Mirror is a lot like, and it opens up, you can see here, is a lot like transparency. Subsurface scattering is um, for like your skin or marble, things like that. The light goes into it and through it and comes back out. And if you want skin to look right, it has to have subsurface turned on. It's also very processor intensive, so and not too relevant for spaceships. Um, strand is, is uh, for making things like hair. You actually shoot a particle into the air and that kind of becomes your hair strand. Uh, again, these are just settings, not real important to us. Shadows off or on, whether it receives them, stuff like that. Uh, so that's that. Um, then this is also important. This is a texture. Um, if we take like a cloud texture for an example, as you can see here, it kind of looks cloudy. Uh, we'll turn on both so you can see that here is the cloud texture. Here is our sample marble with a nice shiny spot. And we have the green color. The green is here, but there's also a second color, purple. And we can change this. So we want green and uh, say kind of a white green. Then we have a kind of moldy looking piece of marble. Um, what else? Uh, this is this something you just look up in the manual. No, won't, won't go into that. It's not too important most of the time. <clears throat> These are different settings for your cloud. You can make the edges hard, for example, and then you get a funky looking pattern. There are lots of different ways to interpret the math here. Um, and obviously there are a lot of different uh, types of textures you can have. You can just play with that yourself. 
a simple object and render it is the best way to play with it. Um, image or movie is interesting. You can add an image and map it to the surface of your sphere. Um, or a movie as well. No, oh, just dropped my microphone. I it didn't sound too bad. Um, point density is a new thing. I haven't used it, don't know much about it. Noise can make things look really more natural, except for it changes picture to picture, which makes it not too good for animation. Uh, yeah, that's about it there. Um, mapping is how how the texture is mapped to the surface. The only thing really interesting here is probably UV when that's turned on and the type of projection you can play with that and how the XYZ are interpreted. Influences, this can be very important. Right now it's influencing the color. It could influence the intensity, the alpha, translucency, ambient, emitted light, the, the reflectivity. So for example, if you turn on reflectivity and off color, you'll end up with the mirrored, yeah, the mirror isn't turned on so you can't see it in the, the sample here, but um, variable mirror surface amount. Uh, I'm not saying that right. Anyway, you get the idea, I hope. Um, also can affect the geometry. That's often very useful. Uh, we usually use normals. And you can see up here it's become wrinkled with this cloud texture. Um, the way the math is mixed together. Yeah, that's pretty much that. This is just um, for doing particle systems. We won't worry too much about that. This one here is for enabling physics for cloth, fluid, smoke. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about that. It's fairly complicated. Um, what else can I tell you? Grease pencil is for drawing on the surface of the picture here of the interface. It's helpful if you have a team and you're conveying messages to each other. It has a lot of other uses. It's worth looking up in the manual. Um, right now we're in object mode. So you have the location XYZ, you have the rotation. the scale to one. Um, we'll get into that later in the next video. The dimensions right now this is a two by two by two uh, blender, blender unit cube. Um, the view is using a 35 uh, angle millimeter and perspective view. That's just leave that alone. Don't worry about that. If you actually have to make a movie and get the, the lens to match the movie camera lens and you play with that. Um, this is actually your viewport clipping, starting and ending. You leave that alone. The location of your 3D cursor. Sometimes that's really good to know. Um, this is your display information. Um, these lines here help you sizing things, and this is where you set that up. Um, Multi-texture, different ways to interpret the texture on the surface. Um, if I actually turn on GSL, I think. Will it show it? No, it's not going to show it. Um, okay, look at turn on here. Textured. Now you begin to see a more realistic, in this case not so good, but uh, if that's all turned on properly, you'll see a more realistic view of your surface texture. Um, I think that's probably not showing up because I have it on. I just had to scroll that up to get to that. That can be, if it's gone, just scroll around with your middle mouse button. Um, if I turn that on to Okay, I've lost it. What did I do? Senior moment here. Um, no, I was in the right place. Okay, sorry about that. Um, to color, I think it'll show up and draw the normals on. Of course, I'm wrong. Um, good thing to know, F12 to render your picture, and now you can see that texture. Um, escape to get back. That's very good to know. Another thing is control up arrow to use the whole screen to view things, and maybe you might want to do N and T, N and T, so you get your whole viewport there. That can be important if you have a small monitor. Um, and then control up arrow gets you back to normal mode. 
Um, spacebar brings up a window that allows you to find things like, say, if you want to subdivide something. So you can do multi array subdivision or subdivision set. Um, that can be useful. At times, if you want to quickly bring up a command and do it. Over here, you have all the commands you can do. If we go into edit mode, you'll see these change. There's a lot more of them. This one over here also changes. So if you can't find the command, that's probably because you're in the wrong mode. Um, other modes, weight painting has to do with animation and getting surfaces to stick to the bones properly. Um, texture painting is just what it says, texture painting using the UV maps. Vertex painting, we don't ever use that really, but it's to paint the vertexes, the little dots there. Sculpture mode is fun, but not too useful for spaceships. It basically allows you to treat the mesh as if it were um, clay and add or subtract or crunch or we can go into that mode you can see it it won't do much because I've only got a few points here but if you make a sphere with a whole bunch of points then you can draw things like you, as you see here on the surface of an object it's good for creating moons um, yeah and then edit mode object mode um, here under object you have all the possible commands you can do. It's better in Blender to always learn these things like control G for create a new group. Um, it really is much faster and much easier and uh, it's just the way to do it. That's how Blender was designed to be used is with hotkeys. Um, and it's different ways to select things. Again we'll play with that later. And view. You can change all your views here. But most of these are done with the number pad keys and things like that. So I don't click on this very often. So what else? Oh, this is your timeline for animation. These are your frames. Right here it gives you your frame number. I'm currently in frame 50. The animation is set to start at 1 and end at 250. Here you can play the animations. Um, I don't know what that does. Don't ever use it. This has to do with keying animation which means setting the endpoints and then the computer calculates the positions between the two endpoints. Again, not too important with spaceships. Same type of thing here, more information. Nothing really critical. Um, oh, this button, a very important button. You can change each viewport window to what you want it to be, like for outliner, which is duplicate of this here. This is also outliner. And I could change this one as well. Um, this one is normally in 3D view, but if you want to set up your own thing, go ahead. Um, here, there are little tabs. You can pull these, and now you have two windows. This can be useful if you have this you this window perhaps in your perhaps in your camera view, and this one's your working window. Perhaps you're looking at it from over. That's very very useful at times. Um, if you get tired of these and you want to get rid of the middle click, join area, and then you get a Oop, didn't do that right. Join area. Why isn't that working? Okay, so I'm incompetent. Anyway, there's some way to put these back together. Ah, oh, there we go. You just have to click it. Um, so this one's going to join that way, or I can go to this side and join that way. You'll find that if I try to click this whole window and join it to here, it won't work because this is two windows. So you have to join this one to this one, and then you can join this one to this one. Possibly, actually, you'd have to join this one down here to this one first, too. That's why we have these up here. And you can add ones. If you click this little Add button, you can make your own setup. Very useful at times. Um, rendering. Good to do. Render image, render Im animation. I usually, again, I just use the render image here. Um, or I'll do Control F12 or I'll do F12. I don't even go up here and click on these things anymore. Ah, adding meshes. These are meshes, all the different basic shapes you can add. Curves can be very useful for making spiky things and curvy things. Um, surfaces, I'll let you just play with those. Meatballs are kind of weird, or metaballs meatballs. Um, there's one inside there. I'll get rid of our Okay, now we have one of these balls. We'll add another one of these balls. Let's do it the easy way, which is Shift A. Um, I have two of these balls, and if I grab the grab the ball, you can see they 
smooshed together, kind of cool. Um, it can be useful. You can get a whole bunch of these things and make cool shapes. And then you can convert them back to a mesh. That's, that's the important trick. Um, other, what else do we have? You can add text. Um, amateur, this um, armature to uh, add bones to do animation. Lattice is something you can put around your model and then deform the, the lattice and it deforms the model. Empties are just points. They can be very useful. Sunlight, spotlight, hemi area. Force fields, if you're doing... Um, um, God, I can't think. Uh, it's too late. Um, if you're doing physics, then you can add wind, and then you can have your piece of cloth blowing in the wind, or whatever, grass blowing in the wind. Group instance, this is a way of grouping objects together. It's very uh, useful sometimes when you're importing things for, from uh, other Blender files. Uh, ah, rolling this up and down scales, that's important to know. Shift middle button allows you to move around. That's also very useful to know. Yeah. Um, oh, one last thing. Right now we're looking, if we go to camera view, we're looking from the camera. You can also use things like the light by doing shift camera view. Now we're looking at the ball from the perspective of the light. That can be really useful when you're trying to do like R. I'll do R twice, actually. Um, if you want to get your light pointed at the right thing, like you want this right the light pointed right at the center of your object, and there you go. That's quite a useful way to do it. But then remember, when you render it, it's going to render it from that perspective. So you really want to go back to your camera and do Control Zero Numpad, and now you're back to your camera view. All right, I guess that's it. Can't think of anything else to tell you, and I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching, and oh, give me feedback. I want to know if this was helpful. Yeah, now my film is not going to turn off for me. Oh, because I'm not in the right window. There we go.